Welcome back to Fat Chat, the number one podcast on the internet with three pigs sitting at a table. It's also the hairiest podcast on the internet. Absolutely. And we're even down a beard today. We normally have Josh. Rest in peace, Josh. Yeah. Rest in He's peace, not actually sorry. gone. He is just <laughs> missing for the day um, because Zach was like, I'm going to grow an extension of my beard, which we thought you were going to Two different have. colors, blonde and black. We didn't want five beards. We thought that was maybe overkill. Um, so we kicked Josh out, and then he didn't grow the beard, and now we're just down a man. So it was got kind of weird. I it is a little I weird, yeah. to my promise. I'm sorry. You oh. should definitely apologize to Josh for that. Josh, I'm sorry. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. We are down a beard, you guys, but like I said, it's going to be just as good. Maybe better. Sorry, Josh. But we had a <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah, wah. episode 23, 23 now, you guys, that's a whole lot. We've been doing this for, this podcast is as old as I am in podcast years. Indeed it is, sir. So we've been doing it for a little bit, a lot of fun. And we got James. Yo. We got Zach. True. And we got Brandon. <laughs> so we're all here, you guys. Lots of news this week. So we're going to jump right in. Not as much uh, just chit chat because we got, we got things to talk about. What do we got to talk about, Brandon? Important things. Okay. Good news. Of the, the week. The news of the season. Oh. Ooh. You know, he's on it, you guys. Ooh. We've been talking about it a lot. Uh, the PS4.5 yep. has been rumored. A lot of stuff like that. Um, Giant Bomb, which is actually uh, GameSpot's sister site, um, has just reported that the code name for it is Neo. The one. The, the one. one. The Neo. I wonder if it can stop bullets. Can he be Mr. Anderson as well? It can't stop bullets. But there is sure? a new spec chart for it. Okay, let's and hear it. I have it here. Perfect. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do, compare the original to the new one. So original PS4, it's an 8 Jaguar core at 1.6 gigahertz. The Neo CPU will be at 2.1 gigahertz, still using the 8 Jaguar cores. Uh, the GPU here is going to be different. The original one right now is an AMD GCN 18 CUs at 800 megahertz. Uh, the new Neo one is going to be 36 CUs. So double. At, yep, at 911 megahertz. Um, and then the PS4 memory here, as far as the uh, actual cache, I think is what it is, <clears throat> is uh, 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 at 176 gigabytes a second. And the new Neo is still going to be 8 gigabytes of GDDR5, but now at 218 gigabytes a second. So <clears throat> in other words, it's just going to be really good at pumping out the visual. Because you still got the same core. It's not that much of a difference there, but the big difference is your uh, graphics processor. That's huge. We should you be got, seeing some faster load times then, yeah. You got duffel, uh, double uh, core units okay. in there already, so that's that's exciting. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, they've been talking about it. A lot of it is to obviously put out that 4K uh, gameplay and then obviously help with the graphics and streamlining of the uh, VR. VR capability. So, yep. giving it that True. extra processor power, that's really what it is. So, although it is codenamed the Neo, it's not like it's going to be a full new console. They've actually come out and said... Um, well, here, I actually have the exact quote here, so let's go through. So uh, Giant Bomb says, Sony seems committed to keeping the Neo and the original PS4 bases connected. As such, there will be no Neo-only games, and Sony will not let developers separate Neo users from original PS4 players while on PSN. Likewise, Sony explicitly and repeatedly states that developers cannot offer exclusive gameplay options or special unlocks for Neo players. Boom. So, no separation in the family, PlayStation Nation. You are all good. together forever. That's Correct. really good. So they've basically said you're not going to get special weapons. You're not going to get special missions. You're going to get the same content even if you don't upgrade, which is really cool. But this offers people who want the increased graphics, who have maybe nicer TVs. They have the VR. They want all that extra processor power to do what they want in a more streamlined, uh, better fashion. Yep. Now, I was reading somewhere that they did say that now offline matches might be affected by the uh, Neo. So they're saying matches that like currently have four-player multiplayer may support up to eight players because Ooh. the extra processing power is there for it. Very nice. nice. Um, now, of course, that's going to have to be if you have the console. I don't know if it's going to be like if you can do it online, like solo matches, but it's not just going to be something that like if you don't have that, like, you know, in Battlefield... Um, Obviously, the three and the four didn't play together because they were different numbers of right, people. Right. Um, it's ne that's never going to happen. 
Hmm. Online's always going to be, if you have the Neo, you have the PS4, you're going to be able to play together. That's, That's awesome. That's nice. That's Good very stuff. awesome. Yeah. I'm very happy to see that because that was one of the things I was kind of worried about is if there was going to be some kind of separation. And I'm really glad that there isn't because I know that there's a company out there that would have. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's just cool to see that I, because I personally am going to upgrade. I am too. I'm going to get the VR. I have two of them already. I would love a third and the third one just be like the central powerhouse to my other two. Now that I know there's no separation, I I think I'm with you guys. I think I'm sold on it now. I'm really happy about it. And it looks like, I mean, Sony hasn't come out and said, um, even like um, Giant Bomb, they didn't say anything about price, but the price that's been kind of being toyed around with has been 400. That's kind of like the number they're playing with. Um, so we'll see. As we, we'll keep you guys up to date as we know more. Uh, so far, this is really all we know about Some it. Some questions that lead out of that into the okay. next topic. Will this improve my destiny load times in orbit? <laughs> and will Microsoft come up with a codename Agent Smith? Only time will tell. Only time will tell. <laughs> What's the next topic? <laughs> next topic is actually one I'm super excited about. Sony live action movie rights are being bid on. Currently, there are three big people. We have Sony, okay. we have WB, and we have Legendary Studios. All Sony. Wait, there's Sony. a Sony title? Well, well Sony has Sony's their own bidding. movie developer. Yeah. On what title? Pokemon live action. Did you just say Poke? You said Sony live is bidding on Sony. Correct. That might have been what I said. Okay. Either I way. was like, you didn't say Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Pokemon, okay, so Pokemon. Pokemon. Pokemon live, live action there we go. is going to be bid on by those three studios. <laughs> Hearing um, that, I think the only company that has any chance of doing good at that personal opinion here has got to be Warner Brothers. They've got the, the, the range, I think, of all different types of movies, different kind of productions that they've done over the years that they could really drive that home. Well, and Warner Brothers originally, too, was one of the first places that Pokemon, the animated series, actually debuted on was uh, Warner I Brothers in that. the morning. When WB. Yeah. yeah, it was WB. So maybe yep. they have like maybe some into knowledge with like whoever was watching it or putting that out there to begin with. They might have a market for it they mm-hmm. can push on the states. But um, I, I want to see Legendary get it. After getting uh, Pacific Rim, like one of their biggest like CG movie success stories ever, like that would just blow up over the top. They've so, been doing a lot. They've actually did uh, Godzilla. I mean, they did Ju- Jurassic World just recently. Um, they're doing the um, the Warcraft movie, mm-hmm. and then they did uh, Godzilla. Yep, and then Pacific Rim, and yeah, with the Warcraft movie, which we did a trailer breakdown for, that is looking crazy good. Yeah, ridiculous good. in detail. That scene where that dude is uh, dive bombing on the Griffin. Yeah, Travis like, Fimmel. Oh. Yeah, I think they could definitely do it. What this means more for me, so obviously, as a huge Pokemon fan, anybody knows me, knows I'm excited, knows I'm passionate. He's not a Pokemon fan. He's a Pokemon master. Yes, he is a Pokemon. Master, he was the first the to take the elite Arizona core. region. Um, on that note, though, for <laughs> me, though, this this talks more about Nintendo making smart moves. So, we've talked a lot about Nintendo hardware not being the great, they put a lot of good software out there, they have a lot of good titles, a lot of good name recognition. For me, seeing them basically take one of their big titles like Pokemon and say, Here you guys go, somebody make a movie, we're not going to make it, but we're going to basically take your money for using our rights. I think it talks more to me about maybe the direction they're moving in to be smarter with their titles and not just keep them all in-house. Is, is that Nintendo's doing, though? Or is that, like, whoever owns, like, Pokemon? Because I know Nintendo's, like, a big part of it, but Nintendo's, like, a big branch now, isn't it? Well, I think or they Pokemon, heard Brandon. Pokemon's a big well, branch, Game right? Freak yeah. owns Pokemon, and mm-hmm. Game Freak is part of Nintendo. Okay, gotcha. I so, didn't know if they were still like their own entity and they're like, oh, we're, we're no. curious about the live action movie deal. No. So I, think they, I think they caught the podcast and they saw Brandon multiple times saying, get your shit together and they've decided to and get the their shit thing together. And the first was, we need a Pokemon live action movie because this Brandon guy, he's Pokemon master <laughs> That's material. That's exactly right. That's I feel exactly like if you right. guys didn't have that train of thought, I don't know really what you're doing. I don't know why you're not <laughs> listening to the podcast. Because the next Splatoon update is train DLC. <laughs> Train of thought, train painting, paint train. Whoa. DLC branded. There you go, Nintendo. P Next word, deal. paint, Pokemon. Illuminati Boom. confirmed. Yes. So <laughs> Live action. Like I said, you guys, I think it's going to be really cool. Uh, really great to see. Obviously, we'll keep you guys up to date with it. We haven't really learned a lot. They just kind of announced it. You look like you have something to say. And oh, I'm gonna... I just thought about it. So <laughs> this go. is a good train <laughs> tie-in, right? So remember the, um, I've, you're going to know, which. what was the Pokemon game that you had to go in a train and duel or not duel. Uh, I've been watching a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh, but uh, but I know Pokemon battle through a train and like that was like the end game content. No, I know what you're talking about. I want to say black and white. I think so. I think so. So what if in the movie our hero is sitting at the back of the train? Stuff gets real. Team Rocket's derailing it, and he's got to battle his way all the way to the front 
But just like, like a normal Pokemon battle, there's like live action. It's Pikachu's doing quick attacks everywhere off the walls, and it's in a train. And then I'm some paint it. spills out on the side, and I'm down. octopus are everywhere. Nintendo. There you go, Nintendo. <laughs> yep. Don't listen to that. <laughs> Done. I got it. Do anything else besides patent. Don't nope. ever Pending. use black and white as your basis for a movie. <laughs> just don't do no, it. No, probably okay. I We're didn't like, say it has to be black and white. I'm just saying use that sequence from the train. It's probably gonna be Ash Ketchum. I mean, I can't relate you think to so? anybody else. But you think Ash. it's gonna be Ash? It has to be. He's it's superhuman. It's gonna be Catch Asham. <laughs> Maybe it'll be Scott Pilgrim. Okay. okay. Yes. <laughs> Moving on. We got more to talk about. We got a lot. What I can else talk we got? What else all we got? day. <laughs> Steam has just released its first completely uncensored game. What? It's called... God, I'm going to absolutely tear this up. I haven't even heard about this. Uh, Gokton the Golden Lightning, where you play as Nikola Tesla in a Lovecraft-inspired universe. Just launched. Oh, completely shit. uncensored. So people are like losing their mind about it. It's a big deal because obviously everything that we get to the States is always censored. They cut this out because of who knows what oh, reason. Yeah. This one is not. First off, to even look at it on Steam, you have to have an age. There's like an age wall that you have to go through and you have to tell them what age you are to even get to it. And then like we were like clicking through pictures earlier and I was like, oh man, this game looks really cool. And there's the <laughs> naked ladies, <laughs> which didn't derail me from the game in any way. It was yeah. just like, at first it was like actiony, JRPG, really cool. And then I was like, and here are the naked people. <laughs> How are the graphics? Is it 3D? Um, yeah, it's kind of a, it reminds me a lot of like the Digimon game that I was playing, Cyber Sleuth. Oh, okay. Same oh, kind so of they're style. looking pretty okay. good. The graphics are looking pretty good then. Yeah. So nice. they're pretty, pretty and good. And you said Lovecraft inspired? Lovecraft inspired universe. Dude. Where you play as I'm Nikola sold. Tesla. Um, and Dude. He's, he's the hero. And then the, you have this single partner who's like this female who hangs out with you. I don't care. I'm buying this. I'm buying this. Game's going to be ridiculous. To me, though, this is just showing the like great like move forwards that we're having. We've talked about it before, how gaming has matured. Yes, we did. Um, while well, this game is obviously <laughs> taking it at another step, maybe to, yeah, a lot of those like <laughs> titles are like just based around sex, which is fine, whatever. Um, maybe not the direction, but it is cool to see games maturing with us. We're adults now. We've all we know about sex. We've heard about it. We've had it. <laughs> maybe not all of us. Sorry, guys. Um, people at this table. Wah, 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 um, wah. Regardless, though, I think it's cool that we can push the limits forward. We can try something new. I agree. Um, and for Steam to be the first one to do it makes a lot of sense. It's a PC. Um, a lot of adults are really into the PC gaming. Yes, kids are more into the so. console gaming, so yeah. it makes sense. You know, I, I really, really get it. So this game looks so good. <laughs> is this it? Is <laughs> this that is, it? Yeah. Wow. So, oh my. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So and I'm yeah, buying we're, this. We're yep. looking at screenshots. This am, looks really uh, good. How yeah, much is it? Buy this. It's like thirty-five bucks, I believe, right now. It's on sale. <laughs> That's uh, so good. Just launched. Oh, look, it's fifteen percent off. Definitely, you guys. <laughs> regardless, if you're going to buy the game or Done. not. Like this is a big point in like American gaming to like be able to be at this point where we can launch absolutely yes uncensored games yes absolutely they can come out the way the games <laughs> were built That's and so meant sick. to be I love that um this one we could talk a little bit about it there's really not too much to talk about but if you haven't seen it yet you guys the Gears of War trailer Gears of War four trailer it was good did come out didn't watch it it was really cool so it actually yes. showed it was like really like heartwarming they showed like. Marcus just like living his normal life like after the war and his son like running to him through a field and then like it a locust grabs him and pulls him down no it Bad clips all. to his son is an adult running through the same like forest and field with like the locust behind him chasing him like trying oh to kill him. shit and he's turning around while running and shooting like defending himself <laughs> heading towards this across the same field he was there as a little boy it That's was an cool. amazing trailer it's just emotional really cool like I said if you haven't seen it yet go check it out but made oh. 10 times more emotional in my opinion by Disturbed's new cover so uh 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 what is it? Sounds of Silence? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The Simon and Garfunkel cover that yep. they did? Oh, so good. Yep. So they're really cool. Like I said, go check it out, you guys. Let us know what you thought about it. Absolutely. It excited me. It's really the first real excitement I've had for this Gears of War 4 title. I'm a huge yeah. Gears fan. Haven't really been stoked for 4. This got me like going again. Okay. It's like now maybe I'll take you seriously. Yep, that exactly. kind of thing. Now you're on my radar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Red Dead Redemption's map leaks. <gasps> I'm super excited. It's that fake. map was awesome. What? I'm just not. No, oh. <laughs> that it's, map looked awesome. It's a real thing. Um, so this is, I know you said it last podcast, your E3 prediction was Red Dead Redemption 2 or whatever yeah. yep. is going to be there. I think uh, you might have had the most accurate uh, E3 predictions. Oh, you're welcome for Indeed. the link, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> heard it here <laughs> first. To me forever guys. in paint. You're welcome. Remember that. <laughs> More paint. You heard it here 
first. So it's really big, you guys. There's a lot going on. Looks like there's different sections. Um, a lot that the game's going to kind of deliver. And obviously, it doesn't show us that much. No. Mm -hmm. It just shows us enough to be excited, to go, hey, this is a thing. And we've been working on it. It's huge. I How do we wave. feel about it being a prequel? I'm okay with it yeah. as long as it comes with an online setting. Okay. If you can give me what Grand Theft Auto Online had in a Western feel, I'm sold. Do whatever you want. Okay. I can be delivering goods on my station wagon and then I'm just all of a sudden get lassoed and dragged through the mud. Station wagon. Station, yes. whatever my, my, what are they called? Stagecoach. Stagecoach. Yeah. Stagecoach. <laughs> That's a station wagon, right? It's just like cruising. <laughs> <laughs> I have the only automobile in That's here. That's going to be your guys' first mod. Yeah, they, exactly. Station wagon. Ford, wagon. Ford Escort station wagon. That's With right. horse paint on the side. That's right. More paint. It's going to be. Paint. I'm okay with it too. Uh, just as long as I'm not Marston's kid. Yep. Yeah, that guy was a you're probably douche. just a youthful you and like of what you were in the Red Dead Redemption, if I had to guess. Yeah, you're John Marston again. Well, oh. that's the biggest rumor right now. Oh, okay. Is that this is going to be John Marston when he was still running around with his gang. Ooh, it's going to be good. I get to tell him what to do with my directional pad because you know that's how it's going to work. Anyways. Batman. New game is coming out. From Telltale's, well, right? It is not a new game coming out. Well, it's actually the Batman HD collection uh, will be coming out for the PS4 and Xbox One. It's going to include uh, Batman Arkham Asylum and Batman Arkham City. Not Origins, because Origin was not a rock steady game. No, it was not. And the way we actually heard about this is, of course, because it happens every time. Guess. How it did was, we hear about it? It was leaked. From who? It, from them. No. Who, uh, who else leaks everything? Reddit. Uh, Reddit. Come on. 4chan. Come on. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, 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 IGN. A picture from GameStop. Oh, oh I was going to say Amazon Jesus. next, but yeah, I guess that'll work. Yeah. Um, yeah again? Yeah. So an employee from GameStop, unnamed employee, they haven't said who, took a picture of some marketing of something on their website. It didn't really say what. It just said took a picture of something, sent it to a Eurogamer, and... Of course, they put it up and boom! HD collection, PS4, Xbox One. It's called Return. Can we to really Arkham. call two games Return to a Arkham. collection? Batman Return to Arkham HD collection. Yeah, it's just two. But this games. was speculated on when um, Arkham uh, Arkham Knight was coming out. Or yeah, it was. Yeah, it was yeah, Arkham, Arkham Knight. Knight. Yeah, 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 the latest one. I'm going crazy. But yeah, they were like, "Oh yeah, there's gonna be an HD." What do you mean you going? People going because it was going to come out. What do you mean going crazy? I am crazy, uh -huh. and I've had wine and coffee at the uh, same time. Yeah, and it's been a little. It's, it's been a crazy day. It's been a crazy week. I did. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. guys heard all this news? It's been nuts. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely bonkers. You're bonkers. Personally, <laughs> I don't care about this HD collection. You're a piece of shit. Nope. I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna buy it. <laughs> um, it might be good. The games were fun. They were a great playthrough. They were fun to go back through, grab the collectibles, do all that stuff. I've done them. There's no point for me to do them. If they I agree 100%. Update it, because With this what? Is a, the, no, but this is a long time. If they put the system, the combat system that was really fresh in Arkham Knight, and they go back and just work it into the, the old stuff, I'm absolutely okay with them updating that. Are I don't you want buy it, to, it? I don't want it to be as clunky. Would I liked Arkham Knight a lot. I'm still trying to platinum that game. Would you buy it for $60? I don't think they'll charge sixty for it. You think it'll be forty? They absolutely will charge sixty. Or 59. You are crazy. I'm kidding. Did you see what I did there? See what I did there? There you go. So yeah. sixty four eighty five after tax. Uh, oh, that sounds familiar. Uh, <laughs> no, we won't go. We won't pay tax. Okay, <laughs> we'll tell them now. Whoa, that's dark. Okay. Nope. Um, IRS. We had some more. We love you. Leaks essentially. <laughs> um, UK retailer game um, posted on their website Titanfall two with a release date of twenty sixteen. Nice. Um, yeah, that go, doesn't surprise me. When you go into it, look for it further. They've said it could be a placeholder because it literally just says TBC 2016. So no official month, no official no day. no calendar date. 1231 2016. Like everything else is. <laughs> it just you. says 2016. Um, so it's currently speculation that it's going to hit this year, um, which would make sense. Ready? So pick a month. October. I'm going to go with October as well. Actually. I'm going to go with November. You think so? I'm going to go with November. I think, no I think they're going to try to release it alongside uh, or right before uh, Assassin's Creed and such. I'm going to pick a day, too. The reason I say before November Keep doing it. is because I think November, there's already too many big AAA titles coming out, yep. things that people are really excited about. E3 is going to hit us with a ton more. October's just early enough to still be considered like holiday season, but without um, you know hitting those weird dates. November yeah. 8th or the 15th this year. It'll happen. Pick Watch it. October Boom. 13th. Okay, um, Dark Souls 3 just launched. Yeah, 
Duh. Where have you been? <laughs> Under a rock? Had the most successful launch of any From Software game to history. What? Yes! That studio deserves every ounce of this victory. I love all their games. They're it's, so damn good. Uh, they didn't give any specific number, sadly. They just said it's been their most successful launch. They said it was the quickest selling, mm-hmm. biggest so We're just launch. supposed to take their word for it? Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's exactly what we're that's supposed really to do. That's really good though these days. Taking yeah. your word. That's that's really that's like an IOU these days. That's yeah, really good damn too. Right Those it pay is. off eventually. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Having trust, belief in that company. Do you pays mean like you off. game trust? Like game trust, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we do have uh Blizzard came Those out. Are, those are really good at Dairy Queen. You're right. Like, aren't they really good? Yeah, those are really They're good. super tasty. delicious. Yeah. I like the Butterfinger. Mm. Keep them up, Dairy Boom. Queen. You guys make delicious food. Blizzard makes great online games. Yes. They made yes, they WoW. Do. Yes, they do. Some yes, people do. made an illegal server on WoW. Blizzard just recently shuts it down. It was for vanilla WoW, just to throw another ice cream reference in there. It was. Yeah. Weren't they around for a couple of years, too? Yeah, it's been around for a while. So why crash it now? Tons of people have been on it, like thousands and thousands of users. Um, it was a free, basically, because it was an illegal right. mod. So people were basically playing it for free. I'm assuming they probably shut it down because they're probably seeing a dip in their players. They want to make sure everybody can come They want to make sure people are going to play. Now, to add some more fun to this, <laughs> they actually, Lizard Squad comes down. Oopsie. Yep. And basically crashes all of Blizzard servers. They crash their WoW servers, their StarCraft servers, their Diablo servers. Damn. If they have an online game, it got crashed. And wow. basically it was supposed to be in response to them shutting down this server. And wasn't nice. it like immediately to like the same day or the next day? The following day. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. Too Just much. crash that shit. There you go. I think that's a little mean. That's a little <laughs> bit dark because there's those people who have been paying. There's those people who've been playing on legitimate servers. Those people who've been taking their time and they got punished for Blizzard doing something to people playing their game illegally. I get it from Blizzard's point of view. I still think it's hilarious. Yeah, it's it's funny. Yeah, it's, it's fucked mainly up. Mainly because I don't play funny. those games. Well, no. I play Diablo, but I haven't been playing lately. So I don't play online with Sorry. any Blizzard game. Just single player. It's all about Diablo. All about that Overwatch, son. Have you been playing Overwatch? No, but, but the yeah. beta's coming out soon. I'm gonna be playing that alone. More MOBA. Are you are you already set up on well, the not MOBA. No, I'm not in the closed beta. I'm gonna no. be in the open beta, okay. just like the rest of the world, yeah. May 5th through the 9th. Yeah, cool. I thought maybe I was like, oh man, because I know I know a couple people no, got into the, the closed, closed beta. I think stops tomorrow. Yeah. I think. I don't know. I, don't know. I think one right. of our uh one of our community members has been playing I know the closed Isaac beta. Is. Yeah, yeah, Isaac. Yeah. Yeah. I know a few people have, so yeah. the division. What about it, sir? Just recently launched its raid. Well, it launched it last month. Uh, so it's a weekly Falcon raid. Falcon down. Yeah, it's a lot like Destiny where basically once a week you can go into this raid, you can run through the raid, you can beat the final boss, and you get raid gear. Now, people have actually found a glitch in the uh, game where you can grab a shield. Go figure. Run up to the basically the area of the map, and you can use the shield to bash through a wall and glitch back into the raid. Run the raid as many times as you want and, and keep continue getting gear. to get loot. Wow. All the raid gear. Well, bro. that's going to get snuffed quick. Well, yep. okay, so we have an official statement from Ubisoft, um, which is actually their community manager. Manager, those weren't real words. Community manager, <laughs> um, man anger, said on their forum, Ooh. "Using the exploit was a violation of its code and conduct. They are working to fix the exploit." And quotations: "The team is looking into what can be done in terms of punishment for those who have exploited." Ah, big deal. They are looking to punish people who've used this exploit. They look at it as a cheat. They look at it as, once again, quote, <laughs> breaking the code of conduct. What do you guys think about um, punishing those people? I think... Fuck them. Uh, I think that's dumb because here's why. So, like, with Destiny, if you found an exploit, they let you have at it for a bit. And they go in and patch it, and people had their hissy fit, and then they moved on to the next exploit they found. But they never went back and slapped you in the face for it. They're not like, you piece of shit, like, you stole all this gear and all this time. No, I mean, they, they found something that allowed them to get a little bit further and have an edge on everything. And that's because those people are genuinely smart and crazy when it comes to finding those little things. I would never think about taking a shield to a wall right here at this pixel past this bullet hole that everybody has in their game and smacking the wall and phasing through. No, I would never. never, ever think of that. I agree with you as well because the gamers didn't use a cheat code. The gamers didn't... It's just a, it's a coding exploit. Yeah, the gamers didn't go in and break the code. That's how the game was built. They okay. exploited it. And Bungie highlights those people too. Like one guy ran the last raid, the King's Fall raid, by himself. Yep. 
and it's like he got his own like video interview and everything else. That's the way you should take that approach when somebody finds an exploit or wants to do something crazy because they took the time to do that. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a question here. Maybe okay. I misunderstood. So this was this was a, a normal glitch. Like nobody broke the game. No, you just you have a shield. Everybody can get the ballistic okay. shield, and, and they you just run up found to a, a way. Wall. Okay, you like then I misunderstood. I thought you were saying like they, they broke the game. Okay, so mm. I will not say fuck them, but I will also say. That's kind of fucked up. I don't know. I think it's dirty that Ubisoft is going to punish those people. I agree. They didn't yeah. make the choice to put that in there. They obviously used the, the choice to exploit it and use it. Jesus. See, I thought and it was a hack. Some people do it, too, to save time. Not everybody can go in there once a week. These timed exploits are driving me nuts. But I agree. Like, when it's on a recurring factor of, like, once a week or whatever the case is, like, that's annoying. Knock that shit off. I'm busy all week. This is my one day that month I can play. Yeah, I would exactly. like to just keep churning it out as much as I can. You mean like any other MMO ever that you can just pick up? You can run the raid. It might take you a couple hours, but you can run it. Or 10 even times queuing, in a day. yeah, even queuing up for a bit. Like maybe you can't get the epic loot drop because you didn't roll high enough, but yeah. it's still that chance of dropping, and maybe you can get it again. Exactly. I hate that stuff where it's like you have to wait for the week reset or the month to turn over or New Year's to come around in China. I'm over it. Like yeah, no, I agree with you. I think if you're gonna like. If you're going to give me these time frames and it's broken somewhere and I can exploit it, like, that's your fault. It was your job to put out the game yeah. and make it, the you know, I had to fit into your guidelines. If your guidelines say I can cheat this, then I can cheat it. it, it, it people call it cheesing. Like, it, yep. you just cheese the stuff. Yeah. And the one thing, too, is when people did cheese something else in the division, they patched it and then they put a little backpack with a note on it and it was like a little poet yep. thing with like a thing because it was people were exploiting the boss bullet cave. It was like a joke basically. Yeah, it was yeah. like the loot cave for Well, didn't the somebody actually do that in real life? Like, wasn't that picture that went around online? Somebody found that spot in real life New York and put that thing on there? And so, No, like, that was actually the in game? the game. Like, that's just sitting there at one of the street posts. Okay, I, I thought it was the real life thing. Mm -mm. Well, I just, I, I did say fuck him. I do want to recant that. I thought I thought it was a hack. I'm nope. Sorry. No, you heard I, him. I'm sorry. You, you if heard you him. did it, I'm sorry. I heard wrong. No, he said fuck you. Replay it back. It's That's that right. minute 15 and 38 seconds. I'm Go shamed. listen to it. I'm shamed. Make it a gif and a meme. This one here, you guys, I think is actually the <laughs> biggest news of the week. PAX East will be going on from April 22nd to 24th. Woo! Woo. Um, PAX East, for anybody who doesn't know, all well, the PAX conventions are basically gaming conventions put on by Penny Arcade. Um, PAX East takes place in Boston, Massachusetts. It's at the Massachusetts. I can't Massachusetts. Say, I can't say real words today, Massachusetts. apparently. Massachusetts. Um, it's going to be at the Boston Convention and Exhibition Center. Um, so check it out. If you're in the area, go to it. If you're not in the area, you can tune in. On, you can just stream it. On pretty much anything. For Twitch, those that, YouTube, I'm sure we'll have it up. Exactly. For yeah. those that don't know, Mr. Kling, what is Penny Arcade? <laughs> so I should be shaking my head at you. I see. I couldn't resist, man. I, I thought you resist. said shitting your head for a second. <laughs> but I will say this PAX is different from a lot of the other big expos. This is where usually indie games get together. Is yes. on PAX compared yes. to the bigger titles. You're not going to see EA do a big flaunt here. You're not going to see um, like uh, Activision or even Blizzard show up to those. It's usually small developers that are trying to get their game known, and it's it's a really fun thing. PAX happens all over the mm -hmm. the country, and it's really cool. So if you never go to one, go to one. The people are really cool. You actually get to talk to the developers directly. Yeah, I've wanted to go. It's but actually I never cool. Got a chance. When they started it, they started it years ago, yeah. and I think they said the first one had like a tiny turnout. It was like a couple thousand people. And then the second one. And then literally they said <laughs> every year since then, it has doubled, doubled. in size until, with more venues. until literally they got capped out on venue size where they couldn't go any bigger, and they were just like, well, this is it, and we're going to sell out at venues that uh, it's just too big. That's so, impressive, because yeah. considering it's all indie stuff, that's impressive. Yeah, I mean, they have, like, really cool stuff there, too. Like, um, nerdcore rappers, like MC Frontalots performed there before. Okay. It's, like, a full show. I mean, it's like E3, but, like, more for... The diehards, I would say. Yeah. In my yeah. opinion. It's I not agree. just, like, the big AAA titles. Mm -hmm. It's not the, to catch the news attention. It's really for gamers. It's for gamers. It's yeah, built and developers. by gamers for gamers is yeah. really what it is. So, really cool. If you don't know who Penny Arcade is... <laughs> You've probably seen them on the internet, at least some of their comic strips. Oh, and yeah. If you haven't, there's a problem. You there was Google a Penny game, Arcade. The game that came out on Xbox uh, Arcade back on the 360 was awesome. It was a turn-based RPG. It was really good. <laughs> Last but not least, you guys, we did just launch our Patreon. 
We've got three really big ones. I want to give a special shout out to Andy Fritz. Boom. David Escobar. Boom. And Emilio Martinez. True. They are some of our patrons, you guys. They are going to go ahead and support us. We did start it up. Um, basically, the idea for it is obviously we do this weekly podcast. Yep, yep. We want to keep bringing out more stuff to you. You guys know we do our monthly unboxings. We do uh, video game reviews when we can. Um, right now, we put a lot of work into this as it is. A lot of stuff comes out of our own pockets, and we're happy to do it, you guys. This is our passion. This is our love. This is what we love to do every day. Basically, all we did was pull out cameras and start recording it. Yep. Um, and then that camera grew, and then the lights grew, and, and then all the other these, stuff grew. Those, yep. that. And then um, debt collectors knock on your door and loan <laughs> sharks look for you. I'm just kidding. I didn't get that bad. Wow. So Maybe we did start me. our Patreon, you guys, or Patreon, you guys. <laughs> it's literally just a way uh, for us to get a little bit more. None of the money's going into our pockets. Mm-hmm. Every bit of money we get is going right back into making more content, better content. Um, you know, we'd like to do uh, daily videos if we can. We'd like to do a whole lot more, you guys. And that's what the Patreon does for us. It allows us to have a little bit more freedom, allows us to push the limits, and allows us to go to the next it level. It allows us to expand on our menu size, but still yep. keep the entrees just a little fuller than what they are. Still get you a good, healthy, hearty video digest of content. Indeed. Mm. So check it out, you guys. Please. Um, you can donate seriously as low as a dollar. Um, you know, that's. That's which helps us out a lot. Like a lot of people think like a dollar doesn't go anywhere. A dollar goes right back Absolutely into this, which does. helps out a whole bunch. It means so much. It's literally $12 a year if you do that. Yep. We have a lot bigger ones. Yep. It goes all the way up to 15 is even the highest we do. And you get a free shirt every time we make a new shirt design. That's right. Mm-hmm. The shirts cost 20 bucks. It's only 15 So you get a shirt for cheaper. Yep. And every time we come up with a new design, we just fetch it to you for right free. Right to you straight. Right and to you. And of course, at the end of it, you guys, you get to support us, which shows us so much passion, so much love. We even understand that not everybody has disposable income. You might not even have that dollar. And we understand, you guys. If you do like it, you don't have that to support, just subscribe to our YouTube. Share it with your friends, you guys. Share it with your friends. Tell other people. Because like we, we love hearing from you guys. And like we appreciate the comments, too. Those have been blowing up quite a bit. Yep. So all the feedback you guys are giving us, that just tells us where to put our focus into. And we love that. The more the more open you are to us, the better we can turn this around and make it more eventful for you guys. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. We honestly. talk about it a lot. It is a community. We might be the people who are putting out the content, but we wouldn't be doing it without you guys. Like he said, we love to hear from you. You guys can tweet at us, comment at us on YouTube, go find our Facebook, leave comments there, you guys. Let us know what you're thinking. Like I said, share us with your friends, subscribe to our YouTube, and come like our Facebook page. Boom. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. 